And let's take a look across the city this morning. It's looking pretty beautiful out there. It should be around the 60s, a perfect brunch day, maybe a good day to go out for a run. Welcome back to Wake Up Washington. Let's check in with Mary Marshall now to see how our Sunday forecast is shaping up. Well, we're following a developing story this morning out of Frederick County in Maryland. One man is dead after being shot by Frederick police last night. It happened just after six on Northeast Street, not far from yesterday's deadly tanker truck crash. Frederick police say officers went to an apartment building to execute a warrant for a parole violation. They found the man in a closet and he was armed with a knife. Police say when the man ignored officers commands to drop that knife, they shot him. The Maryland State's Attorney's Office and Maryland State Police are conducting an investigation into the circumstances surrounding this shooting. To D.C. now, so far this year, nearly 380 crimes in the district have involved guns. Yesterday, D.C. Council members, community activists and concerned citizens came together for day two of a three day roundtable on how to curb this gun violence. The roundtable is being hosted by Council Member Brooke Pinto. On Friday, public witnesses testified virtually. Participants say there's no single solution for solving the problem, but say how police interact with the community definitely plays a part in the solution. So to have the police show up to be like, we need more police to get the guns off the street. You take the gun off that street, it's gonna be another gun on the street. That you can't police your way out of gun violence. You have to think about what that looks like. It's almost See? like a foreign entity coming in and telling you how to live your life. That's a that's a recipe for disaster. A lot of passion in that room. The three day gun violence roundtable wraps up tomorrow with government witnesses speaking to participants at 11 a.m. at the John Wilson building in Northwest D.C. Well, we're learning more tonight about the death of a passenger on board a business jet headed to Leesburg, Virginia, when the aircraft encountered severe turbulence. The National Transportation Safety Board says the man was one of three passengers on board the Bombier jet that took off late Friday afternoon from New Hampshire when the jet hit turbulence over Connecticut. The NTSB is interviewing the jet's two crew members and two surviving passengers to determine what happened. Now this comes after seven people were hurt Wednesday after a Lufthansa flight from Austin, Texas was forced to land at Dulles after encountering sudden turbulence. We're seeing a new disturbing drug showing up in Maryland. Some people are calling it the zombie drug because of the sometimes gruesome side effects. Experts say it's making the fight against opioids even more challenging. Casey Nolan has new details on why this drug is so dangerous. Its formal name is xylazine, an FDA approved drug for animals only. The state of Maryland recently started a xylazine task force. It's tracking how widespread the drug is and will likely release a report in the coming weeks. Health officials hope that this will help them come up with a strategy for dealing with this new problem. Now we're keeping a close eye on major developments expected this week on two stories which we've been closely following. We're told that the final meetings between elected leaders in Maryland and Virginia and the General Services Administration will happen this week. The GSA is the government agency that's going to decide whether the new headquarters for the FBI will be built in Springfield, Virginia, Largo, Maryland, or Greenbelt, Maryland. A source in Capitol Hill tells our Adam Longo that a group from Maryland will meet with agency leaders on Wednesday and a group from Virginia will meet with them on Thursday. And an update on efforts in Congress to overturn D.C.'s revised criminal code act. We reported last week about President Biden's tweet where he said he supports statehood and D.C. home rule, but he doesn't support D.C. Council's Criminal Code Act. And when the Senate likely passes a resolution of disapproval, Biden says he'll sign that resolution, essentially killing the D.C. Criminal Code Act. A source tells Adam that Senate discussion is likely to happen on Wednesday, with the vote soon afterwards. Well, today is Alec Murdaugh's second full day of serving two life sentences for killing his wife and son. But his legal troubles are far from over. Nikki Batiste has more on what's next for the disgraced former attorney, now convicted killer. I respect this court, but I'm innocent. Well, we're counting down to peak bloom of our cherry blossom trees, and coming up, we'll verify a question that many of you have about these trees.